Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Listen, my friends. Today, I want to talk to fresh graduates. Um, listen to this. Amid the nebulous frame of uncertainty, young fresh graduates stand at the precipice of existence in terms of life expectancy, in terms of a numerical abstraction, which usually transforms into profound mediation, compelling them to imbue their journey with purpose, navigate through obscurities to each their presence into an ever-evolving tapestry. Fresh graduates often face several challenges as they transition from academia into professional world. And here are some of the common issues that they consider or probably they, they face in terms of, and I will give some strategies of how to overcome some of those challenges. Number one is what I call love of, of experience. So many fresh graduates struggle to find jobs because they lack practical experiences. And to overcome this, they can actually gain experience through what they call internship or what they call volunteer work or even freelance opportunities that are related in their field of study. Another challenge that they go through is what they call limited professional network. Graduates may not actually have what they call a robust uh, professional network, making it harder to find jobs in terms of openings or even networking, for example, through LinkedIn or even attending industry events. Those are some of the ways in which you can be able to overcome and reaching out to alumni that can help you to expand your network. Listen, my friends, I know the depression that people go through after school you know, the, 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 the sense of, 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 of uselessness, the fact that you've burnt these hours and you feel like, man, things are not working out. Then there's uncertainty about career path. It's common for new graduates to become unsure about their career goals. They can even explore different industries. That's one of, our, of an option through what they call information interviews and even job shadowing in terms of career counseling services at their alma mater. And I think alma maters should actually create avenues where we can help these young fresh graduates to be able to thrive even after school. Financial stress is another challenge. Student loans is one of the biggest challenges that most people go through. The ability, the fact that they have actually got these loans and they want to pay it back and they don't have enough money because they have not even got payment or jobs or even part-time jobs to be able to manage. They can do that by, first of all, wisely protecting at the source of income that they're getting and also being able to spend wisely. Another is job side frustration. As a young graduate, this, it can be demoralized because you're not having, uh, you're having several rejections from different opportunities that are preventing themselves. And your resumes, you have to know how to work your resumes. Your resumes may not so well. You don't have a cover letter. You don't have a recommender. So you have a problem in terms of job seeking opportunities. That is another challenge. Another challenge is what they call mismatched expectations. Sometimes fresh graduates have unrealistic expectations, for example, about salary. Uh, usually they ask that question, how much money do you want? Or job responsibilities, or even balancing work and life in terms of uh, you know standing, st striking a balance. That can also create a big challenge. You have to learn that, build through skills, and learn through experience one by one. Then there's the issue of what they call lack of soft skills. Soft skills like communications, network, and even time management are often overlooked, but are very, very crucial. And by the way, some of those things are the things that give you the jobs. Graduates, you need to develop these skills through what they call sometimes online courses, workshop, and video practices. Everyone, not everyone may, may be interested about the paper. You know, you may have a good paper in terms of grade, but what comes out of you, what resonates out of you. Then there's what they call imposter syndrome, you know? The fact that your abilities feel like they are they belong to another chosen field and you're not really really sure that what you really graduated in is what's going to help you support uh, in terms of you know your life you have to learn to have self-confidence some of these things build over time and as you do that regularly it will work out for you then there's what they call work-life balance achieving a healthy work life can help you overcome that challenge especially in competitive you know industries or even uh, fields graduates should set boundaries Prioritize self-care and even communicate your needs with your supervisor. Another challenge is what they call adapting to workplace culture. That, my friend, can also be a bully in itself. Each workplace has its own unique culture. You know, you have to adapt. It may be difficult, but you should be able to observe and even learn from your colleagues. Ask questions and be willing to show willingness to integrate into the team. You can even volunteer. Even Sometimes you can be neglected and even given opportunities to work. Go to your supervisor, say, Mr. Supervisor or Madam Supervisor, how best can I help? How can I improve? How can I do this? That would help you to survive. Another is what they call handling feedback. Constructive criticism can actually be tough to accept. So graduates should view feedback as an opportunity to grow, ask for clarification when you don't understand, and even work for improving your skills in terms of 
what you're putting in from your supervisors or even your peers. That is also extremely important. Another challenge is what they call long-term career planning. Graduates should actually think about their long-term career goals, you know, in terms of creating a career development plan. This plan can actually include, for example, setting milestones or even pursuing additional education if necessary. I keep telling some of my friends, some of the students, I tell them, listen, okay, you have your undergraduate, try doing a master's in the interim in the event that you have no job. It will help you place you in a much better competitive place. Asking your mentors for guidance becomes a question of importance. So usually, graduates can overcome these challenges by being proactive, skip seeking support, continuously and learning and even adapting to this dynamic nature of the professionalism that we have today. It's important, my friend, to remember that these challenges are normal and they are part of the transition into workforce. And when you determine with resilience and tenacity, you will be able to overcome. Listen, I was working with at a lot of farm one time with one of the best law firms in this country for all intents and purposes. And the, the senior partner had their child there. And I was, I was amazed when the senior partner actually told the daughter and said, you know what, learn something over and above the traditional things that you learn in school. You know, in other words, give me something that is more like a skill. How do I help a farm? Do a SWOT analysis. These are things that help. People will only employ you if they know that you have something over and above. Something it goes beyond the grades. It goes beyond the fact that you graduated magnum cum laude or summa cum laude. So time management is another aspect. Some of these basic things that we take for granted become extremely important. People are looking at value. What value are you going to add to me? It's the good grade, the good paper is super. But listen, what value, what additional value are going to add? Some people are going to even replicate in terms of money. How are you able to, uh, to, to pull clients to me? Sometimes you do that by, by you know, in, uh, enrolling clients or even encouraging clients. You know, those are basic things that most people take for granted. Graduates should carefully review your benefit pack packages, ask for your human rights, if you have a human rights officer for clarification, and make informed decisions about your coverage. People want to break the ice. People want to think outside the box. One time I was given uh, an issue in terms of uh, handling at, 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 at my former job where I was uh, doing some, some, some moonlighting. And, and listen, the, when they gave me that piece of information to review, I was almost lost of words because I told them, listen, this document is as perfect as anything. And you know what happened? And the senior partner told me, listen, if you're saying that my, the client has brought this piece and there's nothing of value we can add, then why should we be paid? Listen, you have to understand that you should be able to think outside the box and find issues that are, you know, relative to the information you'll be given. You have to learn to survive. You have to learn to create opportunities for better employment or even for further employment. Isolation is also another challenge. Some people will not give you work, so you have that remote work. You have to learn to work through environments. Feeling isolated can actually raise you to have, you know, depressions as well. So you have to learn to, you know, to connect, even have chat platforms, for example, occasionally in-person gatherings, for example, and even going to the, you know, to your friends and or your bosses and having some little, little interactions. Not so much that they think that you are, you know, overdoing it, but try to avail yourself. Set clear goals. Some graduates may not struggle without the ability to set clear goals. These should be achievable. Use what they call smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound goal setting goal framework that can help to define your objective. Another is culture sensitivity. Sometimes you may work in a different culture. In diverse workplaces, understanding and respecting different culture is extremely important. You have to understand that be open in terms of your learning from your colleagues, from various backgrounds, and avoid stereotypes. Even when you don't feel like, you know, you have to avoid stereotypes. This ideology of assuming that people think this way or do things that way. Learn, learn the culture of the environment and then you'll be able. Then avoid burnout, preventions in terms of burnout. Eagerness to prove oneself can lead to what they call burnout. Graduates should actually prioritize self-care, take regular breaks and learn to recognize signs of burnout. Prevent what they call long-term negative effects for your well-being. Listen, my friends, also continue with learning. And this is the magic. You must learn that continuously learning must continue. Learning doesn't stop after graduation. Graduates should embrace a growth mindset and commit to what they call lifelong learning by attending workshops, for example, conferences, or even pursuing further education, or even certificates, basic certificates in terms of those things. Listen, 
Um, it is a gentleman who said that the, the, the literate of the 21st century is not the one who can read or write, but one who cannot learn and learn and relearn. Learn that. Saving and investment as a graduate is extremely important. Understanding your personal finances. You know, don't be so anxious to become, you know, the big guy because you want the best car or the best house. Learn that that money will come one piece by piece. Graduates should educate themselves about financial planning and consider consulting sometimes even with financial advisors. It will help you. Then there's this magic thing called job security. We worry so much about security. You know, the idea that, that, that especially in uncertain economic times, graduates can actually enhance job security by consistently, uh, you know, delivering what they call high quality work or even uh, staying adaptable and also uh, networking to explore what they call alternative opportunities if needed. So by recognizing these challenges and by taking what they call proactive steps to address them, fresh graduates can actually better navigate uh, the, you know, the early stages of their careers and work towards a long-term success and satisfaction to your chosen fields. It's important, my friends, and I know the dilemma, I know the challenges, I know the enigma, I know the, 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 you know, the, the, the challenges that you go through even as a fresh graduate. I know the bullies that come left, right and center. But listen, that's not the end of the world and I can assure you, sometimes you feel like it is worthless, sometimes you feel you're burnt out, sometimes you, you land on the wrong supervisor or the wrong jobs and they deplete you and you lose morale. But don't give up, that is just a stepping stone. One time I had one of the best students in this country who actually was the best for all intents and purposes, who almost gave up, you know, because in her early times, her, her, uh, you know, her senior uh, supervisors discouraged her in terms of work-related issues, and she felt like, I don't feel value anymore, I don't feel excited anymore, I don't feel the joy, and I told her, please hold on, don't give up. Today, she's one of the best leading uh, lawyers in this country. So I, I can assure you that these challenges do happen. Then there's what they call geographic mobility. Some graduates may need to relocate for job opportunities. This can be daunting, by the way. You know, being open to relocation in terms of whether they're sending you to Karamoja or Gulu or Kampala or, or Switzerland, wherever. Researching about these places, knowing what kind of temperament you're going to engage is extremely important and it will help you uh, be able to accommodate and even acclimatize very well. Then there's what they call workplace etiquette. Understanding your workplace etiquette and professional behavior can be tricky for some newcomers. Graduates should actually observe their colleagues and ask for guidance and even adapt to the norm of their workplace. It is important. Listen, you're gonna be bullied. It's normal for you to be bullied. It may not be directly, it may be intellectual, it may be physical, it may be even, even, even in terms of your dress code. You know, you have this one shoe and one shirt and one dress and one whatever, and, and these guys are over around you are changing left and Don't worry, you'll get there. Negotiating your salary and benefits is another challenge. Fair salary in terms of benefits is extremely important. Sometimes they ask that magical question, how much money do you want us to pay you? Don't be so high and say, I want to do this, or don't be so low. Understand the temperaments. Understand what is convenient within you, because at your level, they know probably you have no wife or no husband. You may actually have those children or even a wife or husband for that purpose. But let's make it uh, relative in terms of the socioeconomic that you're dealing with. Mental health is extremely important. Have guard your, your mind because that is extremely important. Graduates should prioritize in terms of having what they call a healthy mental well-being. If you're having a challenge, seek medical help ask for counseling, you know, practice what they call stress reduction techniques, like maybe uh, meditation and even exercise. It will give you uh, the ability to be uh, on top of the game. Then you have to learn to cope with what they call rejection. Rejections can actually be disheartening. Graduates should actually view rejection as a learning opportunity. Seek feedback, as I said, from your interviewers and continue applying for other positions. I don't know how many times uh, people are rejected. Sometimes the people who succeed in life are those who have been rejected almost entirely. Almost, almost three quarters of their application. So don't give up even when you're rejected. Another aspect is maintain a professional online presence. Managing your online presence, including social media profile is extremely important. Graduates should ensure that their online presence aligns with your professional image. Consider creating what they call a, link, uh, what they call a LinkedIn profile to showcase your skills and even experiences. And also engage. Don't, sometimes you have to have a little social capital. Stay on these WhatsApp groups, even though sometimes they talk a lot about uh, too much hula balu. Don't worry about that. You just be there to look out for opportunities. Then balancing your multiple offers. Sometimes you may have so many opportunities that, that may jump on your face. Be careful, evaluate each offer. Consider your factor 
whatever factor that prefers itself in terms of job role, in terms of uh, company culture, in terms of uh, growth potential, in terms of location before you make a final decision. And then there's another issue in terms of overcoming what they call gender or even diversity barriers. In some industries or in some you know, diasporas or even in some job opportunities, graduates may actually face gender or even what they call diversity related challenges. So it becomes very crucial for you to seek out supportive mentors and even allies to advocate for your diversity in terms of inclusion, in terms of your workplaces. This also includes for people who may be physically disabled. That is extremely important for you. Another is adapt to new technologies. As I said, you just cannot. I, I, one of them, I got a job one time because I was able to navigate through technology. So technology, as it evolves rapidly, these old guards are not so much easy to teach these new tricks. So you have to learn that technology may save your day. Learn to comprehend and understand the things. As I said, people are looking out for what do you add? What can you give me? What can what value are you adding? Then another aspect is set boundaries. Establish work-life related boundaries is crucial for your mental well-being. Graduates should actually communicate their boundaries to clearly your supervisors so that they don't take benefit of you. Whether it is sexual or otherwise, understand that. Set professional boundaries and they will be they'll respect you for that. Another is seek feedback from your mentorship. Graduates should actually seek feedback from your supervisors and mentors to improve your skills. Go back and say, senior partner or Mr. So-and-so or Madam So-and-so, how did you like this? Was it okay? Is there something I could do to improve on this? Would you have made it this way? How about this other option? Sometimes they can tell you this is the only way. Tell them, yes, I appreciate, but how about this? Would this be better? Sometimes you can end up making those you know, decisions that can actually change your places of employment. So it's extremely, extremely important to know these basic things. And I want to wish you the super, super best in all your strategies, in all your endeavors. And there's another issue also, discrimination and harassment. Sometimes you can be discriminated. So unfortunately, some graduates may actually face what they call discrimination, even harassment in your workplaces. So it becomes very, very crucial for you to be aware of your workplace policies, for example, to report any incidents to the human resource if there is a you know that policy there and seek a legal assistance when it is necessary so that your rights can be protected we we love you to work in that environment where you are right are uh, you know super protected uh, as i said mental health stigma also becomes another deep challenge you must guard your mental health stigma this is very common uh, especially when graduates should uh, because you sometimes you overwork or you want to over please or you are like over exploited also, you, your mental, uh, you know, uh, uh, ch challenges may may, may 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 actually find their place on you because you, you are overwhelmed. So you have to learn to guard your mental health in terms of uh, knowing your awareness in terms of your workplace. Then there is what they call unemployment or underemployment. That's another big challenge. I have a friend of mine who was a graduate went and applied for a job, but he didn't tell them he was actually a graduate because he wanted to enter the job. Then later when they advertised for that job, after getting experience, he said, by the way, I've been a graduate for long. And he got the job eventually, but sometimes you have to be strategic. So graduates usually struggle to find or end up in a role that, they does, that doesn't fully utilize their potential in terms of uh, the education. Sometimes uh, you have to be wise as you engage in terms of those, uh, those, those experiences. Then, uh, as I said, work-life imbalances is another aspect. You have to have, uh, sometimes you may have what they call excessive work demands, which can lead to severe work uh, you know, imbalances. So graduates should communicate your concern with your employer, for example, and, uh, and you know, explore flexible work arrangements and prioritize what they call self-care to maintain uh, your well-being. Then there's what they call sometimes ethical demands. Ethical demands is another challenge. Graduates should actually consider what they call uh, ethical demands in their work. It's important for you, my friends, to have a strong ethical foundation. In terms of guidance, you have to seek that from your mentors. In terms of your spiritual uh, temperaments as well, it's important for them to know that, by the way, for me, I am a Muslim. Uh, you know, when it comes to, 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 to this time, I must be praying, or I'm a Christian, I, I would like to engage on Sundays. It may not go well, but it's important for you because at, at the end, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and that becomes extremely important. And then health issues and benefits. Understanding your, your terms of your health insurance or retirement plans or even other benefits can be complex. So graduates should actually educate themselves about these matters and consider consulting with a financial advisor for purposes of what? Purposes of guidance. And then yeah, in terms of legal obligations, this is also extremely important. Legal obligations in terms of contracts or even opportunities that are presented themselves before you. 
the misunderstanding, for example, a legal obligation in terms of contractual obligation has serious consequences. So you should actually be careful. I've, been, I've seen instances where people are employed and then after one week they run away and they tell them, you know, you've signed a contract so you're going to pay us for the time that we, for the time of wasting our time. You know, so you have to be careful. Uh, what are the legal obligations in terms of, uh, of, of the contractual obligations that you have? Then avoid substance abuse. Some people tend to get into these issues. Some individuals may turn to substance abuse as, as a coping me mechanism to avoid things like stress or even other challenges. So it becomes very crucial, my friends, for you to seek support in terms of health care from professionals so that you avoid substance abuse. It's very common, and, and, and especially with the kind of world we're living in today. I mean, people are left, right, and center engage in these things. So please avoid some of the things. Then safety concerns. It's important for you in certain industries or in certain workplaces to have to be extremely cognizant of your safety concerns. Okay, graduates should actually prioritize safety training, follow safety protocols, and report any unsafe conditions or even any unsafe practices for that matter. Another aspect is what they call bullying or what they call toxic work environments. Toxic work environments can actually be harmful in terms of mental and even your emotional well-being. So graduates should actually document any instances in terms of bullying or even harassment. Report them to your human resource or whoever is in charge and consider seeking employment elsewhere if the situation does not improve. It's very, very common for young graduates to be taken over or even taken advantage of by people in higher position in terms of sexual assaults or even other bully related issues. So please be careful with that. Legal rights and protections, graduates should actually be aware in terms of your legal right as employees, such as minimum wage, for example, overtime, and even anti-discrimination laws. So consulting sometimes with legal experts can actually help you to protect your rights so that you are on top of the game. Then sometimes we have what they call crisis management. Unexpected crises, for example, emergencies at work can be extremely daunting. So as a graduate, you should familiarize yourself with uh, organization crisis management plans and also prepare to respond appropriately. All the things that I'm saying are extremely important. We were a little bit unlucky. No one was able to check us through some of these drives, but you're lucky that I'm here to guide you, to help you, to anchor you into your destiny because I'm sure that tomorrow you are the leaders of tomorrow, you are the future of tomorrow, and we believe in you. So addressing these and any other will require, as I said, a combination of self-advocacy, seeking professional help where necessary, legal support where necessary, sometimes making difficult decisions about your career. It is important, as I said, to approach these challenges with determination and with a commitment in terms of professional growth. So it's very, very, very important. So fresh graduates, as I said, don't be worried about this immediate pressure. It is normal. It's a transition. Okay, it will help you leave your academic world into the workplace. Okay, so it's extremely, extremely important. As I said, we will not go through the pressures. I've just explained some of them. But as uh, I'll continue talking to you when the Lord God provides more and more opportunities. But for now, I wish you the super best. I know the challenges may not be easy. I know that you may not have a job by now. You probably graduated top of your class and you're asking yourself, why am I still home? It happens, my friend. It's just the beginning. The world will open up. And sometimes you don't have to do the very thing that you may graduate, have graduated in. I've seen people who have graduated in law and they're in business. I've seen people who have graduated in business and they're in, 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 you know, in, in, in export or something like that. You know, so you, can, you just have learned that education will put you at that level so you can be able to negotiate your, your bearing much better. So it's extremely important. So you don't have to be, uh, you know, to be depressed if, in spite of the challenge that you're going through. It's a learning process. And listen, there's a very, very big difference, by the way, between um, what you learn in university and the practical world. What you learn in university may be extremely theoretical. And these are the challenges that we went through myself when I had actually finished university. I thought, well, I am graduated. I think I have it all. I can survive. And I, God help mercy, I made super many mistakes. You know, in terms of basic things, in terms of survival skills, in terms of feeding, in terms of transportation, in terms of savings, you know, and everything was hitting you left, right, and center. And then there's this issue of relationship. You get hold of relationship because you know you are anxious to get married or you're anxious to be married or you're anxious to, 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 to have a child or you're anxious to, to, to buy a car or you're anxious to buy a good phone or to make appearances or to keep appearances. All these challenges are going to hit you left, right and center. Or even an anxious to do a master's or a PhD or perhaps struggle. You know, you have this idea that now I have finished the thing and I'm going to rule the world and then lo and behold, you're going to have problems. But I'm saying that's not the end of the world. I, some of you have probably seen some of these things that on WhatsApp or on uh, social media where uh, people are invited for graduations 
uh, to preside and to enjoy, you know, and then people are whatsapping among themselves and saying, wait a minute, should we tell them what to expect or should we first eat their food first? You know, so those are two different stories. As I said, these are two different things. When you get into the real world, there's a shock, but don't worry. One time we finished university and as I was walking on the streets, I found my guy after doing law and said, man, how are you, sir? I said, I'm fine. He said, man, the thing is empty. I said, what is empty? He said, the thing is empty. He used to be a look at a sugar frame. I said, what is it? He said, it's empty. I don't feel the value of my money. I wasted money, you know, for five years or so. You know, it happens, my friends, it happens, but I'm sure he's now doing very well. I have another guy who actually finished law school and started by, you know, moving on with uh, uh, what are these guys called? These guys who go to knock people's uh, doors and tell them, would you like to open up an account? Blah, 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 blah. And now he's, he's, he's really, for all intents and purposes, extremely doing very well in the legal profession. So you, you have to understand that regardless of where you begin from, it's a question of survival. It's a question of a, of, of a step. Small, small steps, you will get there. You know, and, and sometimes you look at your friends who have actually gone ahead of you or some of those whom you think, Man, this guy was not even as good, couldn't even answer any question in class. And listen, he has got this job because maybe he knows someone. That should not demoralize you. All you need to do is take each day as it comes. You will have your day. You will have your day. You will have your time. The money will come. The, the, the grace will come as long as you're doing the right thing. I know people today if, who have finished university with super grades, you know, in very good courses, who have never worked on a single day. Not even a single day in terms of by working, I'm talking about within their, you know, their qualifications. And yet they have actually applied left, right and center. But they have learned to adapt, overcome, improvise. Okay? That's one of the, uh, the, 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 the those are catchwords that are used by some uh, American, uh, one of the navies in America, I think it's, it's either one of the, 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 the supreme uh, 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 professional army in, in the U.S. Uh, they say overcome, improvise, and, 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 and then adapt. So you have to learn that you, you have to learn to overcome, to improvise, and to adapt. Adapting is, becomes extremely important for you. So my friends, please don't lose hope. I, I know what you're going through. I, I, I feel you, some people call me, and sometimes we, we give them opportunities to research. Volunteering is extremely important. One of, the, one, of, one of the opportunities that would help you get a job faster is by volunteering, by, by the way. And you ask me, Brother Isaac, how am I going to do it? How am I going to fend for myself? How am I going to get the transport? When people see that you have something good, they will cater for your transport. They will give you the land. But try, and try to volunteer and say, listen, I am here. I'm available. I, I could do this for you. I could do a write paper for you. I could do research for you. I, I could do this errand for you within that particular profession that you're doing. When you do that, it will give you an opportunity uh, for people to recognize you. You know, after school, there's a brilliant uh, individual I know who actually graduated on top of the class. And I felt so sad that she took some time without getting uh, employed. And then I went to my senior partner. I told them, uh, sir, there's this individual. Uh, is it fair that we bring her on board? And then he, he, he asked me, I said, uh, how good is, is she? He said she was the best. She was the best in her level. She was the best in HSC. And, and he said, well, if she was that good, how come she doesn't have a job up to now? Man, I was speechless. So I, I, I realized that sometimes the, the, the relevance of the goodness of your paper it does not reflect what is going to happen in terms of uh, the practical world. You know, as I said, your skill, reflect your skill. Learn, as I said, to, to, to live life. People are now looking for value related issues. How are you going to help me to become better? There was a show that I remember one time um, that a gentleman was actually doing. He said, uh, and looking out for people. And he is a guy who came to me and said, sir, you're, you're doing this apprentice show, but I'm going to make your business much better. And he said, that's the guy I want. Create opportunities. Tell them that you have this. Now, for those of you who are lawyers, there are many fields you're going to engage in. Don't say, man, if I'm not an advocate, I'm done. If I don't practice, I'm done. This is what they call transactional law. This includes either the corporate law, for example, real estate, or even contract law. Transactional lawyers who engage in agreements, contracts, and mergers and acquisitions. In terms of company law, for example, where you become maybe company secretaries. Look, about, look, look in terms of that perspective. If you're a lawyer, for example, and you, you're failing to have immediate you know, employment in, in law firms, Think about ADR. ADR is a specialty that is coming up, by the way. It's extremely important. ADR professionals, in terms of mediation, in terms of arbitration, is extremely important. You could do those certificates that make you, you know, recognized. But ADR is a good start for, for, for engaging in, in and, 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 you know, helping people resolve some of the, and, and there's clear good money in terms of that. 
then there's also what they call legal writing in terms of, of research. You may not be an advocate, you may not be able to, to, to do other things, but you can say, I'm going to write, I'm, I'm going to engage in research, I'm going to help people in terms of legal research. You know, legal researchers play a crucial role in many law firms, in government agencies, in academia, for example. So as a student, you can build your writing skills through, for example, coursework, internship, and even writing for law journals, even blogs for that purpose. Begin with blogs. I know I have a friend of mine, uh, Innocent, who actually became one of the best legal lawyers in Africa because he was writing blogs and stuff like that. And that's, and that's how he got employed. People, you know, find value in you and they say, this is a good guy. Okay, then there's what they call in-house counsel. Many lawyers can engage in what they call in-house counsel, providing legal advice within particular organizations. So you must understand as a student that your path should lead you in terms of different corporate professionals so that you can seek internship and engage in what they call in-house legal departments. Then government and public uh, interest law. You know, government has so many, many, many things where they need lawyers. So lawyers can work for government in terms of agencies, in terms of uh, non-profit organizations, by the way, and in terms of uh, other different social, even legal causes. So you have to pursue this deliberately, okay? Engage in public interest claims, for example, in turn with government agencies also, and also, as I said, volunteer in terms of relevant causes. It's extremely, extremely, extremely important. Many people need people to help them. You just have to look for them and find them. Don't lose hope, okay? Then there are what they call compliance and regulatory affairs. Some of those professionals in this field ensure that organizations are there to pursue laws. We have so many enforcement of bodies, including the police and the army. So you can actually engage and also, you know, find opportunities in some of those places. Then there are issues to do with the IP, intellectual property, lawyers we who deal with things with patents and trademarks, copyrights and even trade secrets. These are new areas that you can engage in uh, from maybe the bureau or even uh, people who actually want help in terms of those uh, specific uh, specific or specialized law firms that deal in, in those particular ambits. So uh, then entertainment and sports is another aspect. As I said, the world in terms of what to do, uh, here I'm being specific in terms of lawyers uh, or graduates, fresh graduates in terms of the law, can be extremely, extremely generous. All you need to do is find your niche. All you need to do is to, to, to embrace the world all you need to do, I keep saying this on and on, is to think outside the box and throw the box away. And to keep working and to never give up. Remember that. Dr. King told us this. He said uh, he dreamed at a time where people are not being judged anymore by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. So this ideology of, of I didn't attend this university or I didn't attend the other university is now gone. People are going to judge you by what uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson said in 1841. If a man can build a better house or make a better mousetrap than his neighbor, even if they build the house in the woods, the world will make a billion pass to their door. People are going to seek you out because of that gifting. So that's extremely important. Here at Sue Generous, for example, we engage different people from different diasporas, different uh, students, and, and we, we don't mind your grade. All we need is as long as you have the willingness to work, the willingness to research, the willingness to think that, you know what, I can do this. I can build and I can be strong, I can be, you know, I can have that tenacity and, 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 and veracity that is required for me to engage and win the world tomorrow. Listen, the world is big and is waiting for you. You are the only person who's going to change your own destiny. Take a step, believe in yourself, don't give up. Even agriculture, for example, I've seen people in different professions, for example, who have, you know, started humbly by doing some, you know, chicken poultry, for example, or even stuff to do with uh, animal husbandry and basic things. And, and they found their trend eventually. I know senior lawyers right now who have actually lost, who have not lost, who have left the, the, the legal profession per se and then real estate the businesses and then engaging in traditional businesses in, in, in for example in going to China or even uh, in, in, in different things so you all you need to do is find your niche what as I said education the best is gonna do is to put you at that level so you can be able to compete favorably and for you now who are lawyers it makes your case even better because you are learning you have a little bit of an advantage over other people you know the law so you can be able to accommodate and, and integrate very well in any other field as if you're an expert yourself so please be be mindful that the world is dynamic be mindful that transition is necessary be mindful that whatever you're going to do today is going to have an impact upon you tomorrow and so be mindful in terms of the decisions you make even in terms of the, uh, the career guidance that you take even in terms of, uh, of the relationships that you have because tell me your friend and i'll tell you their habits it's extremely important so those are some of the few uh, advice that i'd like to give uh, from our group here from two generis and so we wish you the super best in everything you do god bless you my name is isaac christopher
लोगों को